Something we don't talk about a lot, and that is this. What do angels do? The Bible mentions angels an awful lot. The problem is when it comes to getting some specificities about angels, their character and things like that, we really don't get a lot of information about them, what they do. We have an idea of what their purpose is. Obviously, we know who they serve, but we're not privy to the full extent of their power. All we know is that they serve God. But how? Well, let's go first and look at something that Daniel says in chapter 7, verse 9. He says, I kept looking until the thrones were set up and the Ancient of Days took his seat. We're speaking about the Lord himself. His vesture was like white snow. His hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was ablaze with flames. Its wheels were burning fire, a river of fire flowing and coming from out before him. Now here it is. And this is speaking of these angels. He says, thousands upon thousands were attending him and myriads upon myriads were standing before him. So in other words, yes, we're speaking about the Lord, but Daniel also makes mention of who was there with him. These angels, how many, a large number. And these aren't just any old bodies. These are somebody that's actually pretty significant. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Psalm 103, 20, look what it says. Bless, it, bless the Lord, you his angels. And look how he describes the angels. He says, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. Now, how mighty are they? Well, we'll never get a full understanding of their strength. All we know is that they're more mighty than we are. We have been made a little lower than them. Remember, Jesus takes the form of a man who is in the form a little lower than the angels. But the question is, okay, we get that, but what do they do? And more specifically, let's be honest, what do they do for us? One question that comes up is, do we have our own angel? You've all heard this term, a guardian angel. Is that biblical? Well, the truth is we're not totally sure. There seems to be some validity to that. The Bible doesn't use this term guardian angels and doesn't specifically come out and say that each person has their angel. But there's a couple of passages that might help to see that maybe we do. Matthew 18, 10, this is Jesus speaking. He says, see that you do not despise one of these little ones, speaking of these children. For I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my father who is in heaven. So it's used to describe that these children have their own angels. Is that to say that we all have our own angels? Would well, be kind of hard to state that they do, but then once you get a certain age, you lose that angel. I don't know. I cannot say definitively. There's no one that can say definitively one way or the other. Another passage is in Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, verse 21. However, I will tell you what is inscribed in the writing of truth. Yet there is one who stands firmly with me against these forces, except Michael, your prince. And so is he saying that there is an angel also that's there for Daniel? Don't know. Again, it'd be kind of hard to say definitively there is an angel for Daniel and for these children and everyone else. And it'd be also hard to say that there is not one. We, ju we just don't know. Probably... For some group of people, there definitely is an angel for them. And here's why I say that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. And let's look at what, they, what he says about angels. He says, are they not all ministering spirits, which means they are all serving, serving who? Serving God, sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation. Well, that's pretty interesting. So he says that they, were, they are ministering spirits. Obviously, they are serving God. But who are they serving as they're serving God? He says, for the sake of those who will inherit the salvation. Well, angels are going to be working on behalf of God for the benefit or the, for the people, for the protection of the people, for the benefit of the people that will inherit salvation. So does that mean that each individual person has their own angel who is working with them, who is keeping them, who is guarding them, protecting them in regard to salvation or is there a, an army of angels who may work with all people at different times? In other words, this angel works with you, works with that person, that person, another angel may show up and work. We don't know. There is no way to know definitively, but there's good news in that statement. Notice what he says, for the sake of those who will inherit salvation. So number one, the angels know who will inherit salvation like God knows. They are working on behalf of those who are going to receive salvation. 
they are serving God. They're ministering spirits. All angels serve somebody. Either they serve the falling, the falling angel, the chief fallen angel. They serve Satan for the benefit of destruction. Or these angels, they serve God for the benefit of their salvation. Well, that's a good thing. And so ultimately, it doesn't matter if we have our own individual angel or there are multiple angels. It doesn't matter. All we do know is there's a mighty force of heavenly hosts who obey God, who also are tending to us in regards to salvation. One other thing that's also interesting that we cannot say conclusively is, but that is this passage here in Matthew 16, 22. He says, now the poor man died and was carried away by angels to Abraham's bosom. Does that mean that when we pass away, that it will be angels that will carry us into the presence of the Lord? We don't know. It's hard to say. But all we, what we can say definitively is this. They serve God for the benefit of those who will inherit salvation. In other words, it's also a good thing to say. It's also proper to say that angels are not serving those who are not going to inherit salvation. Now, do they have someone working on their behalf? Well, not on their behalf, but to help their master, that is Satan, to help him. Thankfully, we've got someone who's just as mighty as these fallen demons, these fallen angels other angels. But then even more than that, we've got God who is ultimately who is in control of everything. Do we have our own angel? Don't know. Are the angels working for God? Without question. Are they working for God to benefit those who are going to inherit salvation for the Christian? Yes, they will. So it would behoove you if you want to also have extra help because we're all looking for some extra help. Why not incorporate the help of angels? That is, if you place your faith in Christ, you would be guaranteed to have help from heaven in the form of angels. Amen.